real person <laughs> and this is a real life review and this is what happened when I just tried to rotisserie a chicken. It takes six hours, y'all. I really want to spend this out right now. Even in my bedroom with the door closed, you could still hear this thing. It was so loud. Epic fail. <laughs> Louise and I'm back with another TV stuff review. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Power Air Fryer 360. This thing does it all y'all. It will take the place of your toaster oven, your regular toaster, your slow cooker, your air fryer, or your deep fryer I should say, or if you already have another air fryer, everything all in one. It's going to be fantastic. I'm super excited. Right off the bat, first thing, I'm not going to show you the box because it was just a plain cardboard box. Um, I hardly even noticed where it said what it was on the box, but it was obviously a huge box, so it could have only been a couple things based on what I've recently ordered. Um, so the box was just totally plain. I opened it up. Um, the thing itself, <laughs> the toaster oven itself, was just wrapped in like a plastic bag, um, and everything inside was individually wrapped as well. Um, it comes with this manual as well as a cookbook filled with recipes as well, so that's pretty cool. I'm going to try out some of the different settings see how it all turns out, and of course I'll let y'all know every step of the way what I think and how everything tastes. So here is the air fryer. As you can see, it is absolutely massive. It is not those little black ones that you typically see on the TV commercials or in the store um, where it's about the size of a crock pot. This is definitely like a toaster oven on steroids, but it's supposed to be able to do everything. So it does say here on the door itself, um, broil, dehydrate, toast, bagel, broil, rotisserie, air fry, dehydrate, reheat, bake, roast, warm, pizza, dehydrate, and finally slow cook. So all different kinds of options. It can literally do everything. Over here, it definitely has some nice controls. So you have the light, Fahrenheit, Celsius, a fan. Um, you can obviously adjust the temperature controls and I'm assuming you can also do your timing and things like that. And then you have the start and pause button at the bottom there. So I am a little unsure on where on earth I am going to keep this thing after I do this review because as you can see, it is absolutely massive. There is no way it is fitting in a cabinet of mine. So it's either going above the cabinets or maybe even on top of the refrigerator, but I really don't want to have to do that. So right off the bat, I will say I am not really a fan of how huge this thing is. I mean, it takes up this whole section of my counter above my dishwasher and is just absolutely massive. But let's go ahead and get cooking. So I just wanted to show the settings really quick. So when you first wanna get started, you're gonna do the selector knob. It does go both ways, left and right. Now it starts up here on air fry, then goes to toast, then bagel, then pizza. And you'll notice these settings up here are changing each time. That's all the predetermined stuff. You can absolutely go in there and change it after. Then bake, broil, rotisserie, slow cook, roast, dehydrate, reheat, and warm. So each time, like I said, it shows you the suggested time and temperature for it, but of course you can go through and modify it, like with the toast for instance. Then you would come over here. The temperature is also for darkness, so you can just come in and adjust that from how light or how dark you want it over here based on this scale. So if you like it really toasted all the way up, otherwise you'll turn it all the way down so it's just light. And that is also adjusting the time that it's in there, obviously toasting it more or less. Then down here at the time, you can also adjust the amount of slices. It also has slices under here. So for the toast, you could change from two slices all the way up to six slices. And again, that will change your time as well. Then you have the fan, the light, the temperature from Fahrenheit to Celsius. 
your cancel button, and all the way down at the bottom is that start and pause. So super easy to use. The screen is fantastic. It's very detailed, it's easy to read, it's clear, the coloring is good. The lighting on the inside is fantastic. Again, you can change from the Fahrenheit to Celsius depending on what you prefer. And then again, you have the fan on there. Not my favorite thing. Maybe it's not coming on because we're not using it. Oh, I'm on bake maybe. Let's see. Let's see if we can get that fan to come on. So if I have it on rotisserie, can I hit fan? Maybe it's not coming on because it's not running, but that's your fan button and you guys heard what that sounds like. So that is a brief overview of all of these controls and everything that you can do once you are here with the different knobs and buttons. Canceling, just holding that cancel button, we'll just go ahead, clear everything off and shut it down for you. So with it, it does come with all different attachments. So you have the one for the rotisserie, just your standard rack. You do have something to put um, things for when you're frying, whether it be fries or chicken or whatever it may be. Just another standard pan, similar to like a baking sheet for the oven. That one does have a little bit of an edge to it, and this one seems similar, um, but it is actually just flat with just a little bit of a curve here on the back. Um, it also came with tons of information. So you have the owner's manual here. Um, it walks you through some steps. And then this one's for the rotisserie. So that's definitely helpful as well. I'll make sure to include some pictures of these. And then finally, you have this recipe book. So mac and cheese, um, blue cheese stuffed burgers, pepper jack stuffed burgers, all kinds of good stuff in here all different types of recipes because after all this thing can do it all so you have everything from fried foods to slow cooked pork to pizza to these delicious looking barbecue pork stuffed little muffins so definitely a great recipe book here showing you everything that you are able to cook using this air fryer so let's get cooking so I'm going to make these Annie's pizza poppers for my little girl. Again, I can't really eat this kind of stuff. Um, I do have dietary restrictions, um, but I'm gonna make these for her. It was super easy. I put that center rack in here, as you can see. I have my tray that I'm going to put my pizza bites on here in just a moment. But as far as setting it all up, once I plugged it in, the screen came on. I turned the select dial to bake. It already has preset temperatures for everything. So once you select the type of cooking that you're going to do, it will automatically go ahead and start warming up to the exact temperature that you need. So while that is warming up, I am going to go ahead and put my pizza poppers on that tray and get everything ready. So I went ahead, I put my pizza poppers onto my pan. I did put aluminum foil on it. Not only does it save time with cleanup, but it will also extend the life of your pans as well, especially if you put them in the dishwasher. So I put that there and then I noticed that up here on the display, it is set to 425, but my poppers here actually need 400. So I am just going to turn the temperature dial until it says 400. And now we're ready to go. So I will give it a few more moments to go ahead and reach that temperature and then we will go ahead and put in our pizza poppers. All right, so it is to our desired temperature of 400. So I'm just going to go ahead open it up and place our pizza poppers right in there on that rack 
And then I noticed the timer over here, so I am just going to adjust that. Mine says eight to 11 minutes, so I'm going to put it at nine minutes, and we will check it then and see how they are. All right, this thing was beeping like crazy, so I came over here and I simply just held this cancel button for a few moments and it shut off. It is quiet, the light is off. I'm gonna leave those in there just for a minute or so and then I will pull them out and I will serve them to my little girl and see what she thinks. So now I am going to toast a bagel. It says to put it on level two. It is the toast bagel embroil level. So I went ahead, that is where I put my pan. I'm gonna go ahead, put my bagel in there. I'm actually not sure if I put it in there well right off the bat or once it starts. So I guess we'll find out. I did not say that in the book. So I'm going ahead and click start. Select bagel. Um, slices, I only have two. So that says four minutes and 20 seconds. Um, and then you can also do the darkness and I like mine pretty dark. So I believe that would be there. So five minutes, two bagels and start. Perfect, so they should be in there right now, awesome. So five minutes, those are gonna toast and then hopefully they are perfectly toasted just the way I like them. And we will be back and I'll tell you how they are. <laughs> so the bagel is done. It beeped a few times. I'm gonna come up here, click cancel. Just gonna hold it for a few seconds. Open it up. And just take my bagel out. And it is actually toasted just the way I like it. So I'm impressed. It did take five minutes. Things like popping it in the toaster for two or three minutes would have been a lot quicker. Obviously saves me two minutes, but there you have it, perfectly toasted bagel. On to the next. All right, y'all. So we are dehydrating the fruit today. I do apologize for my attire. I just came from the gym and because this takes six hours, I need to get it started right away before I even get in the shower. So we have our kiwi and our banana slices in there on the proper um, setting for that great and we have them on our tray in there. We turned our selector to dehydrate because we have our fruit in there. It automatically puts it to 120 degrees and six hours. Yesterday I was reading this wrong because for the pizza bites and for the bagel, obviously it was minutes and seconds. But now you'll notice it actually says hours and minutes. So six hours to dehydrate the fruit. You can always adjust your temperature and adjust your time if need be, if you have a recipe or whatever that calls for something different, totally fine. Mix it all up however you want. These are in there for the next six hours. That is a long time to me. <laughs> um, I'm not personally a fan of dehydrated fruit, but it seems a lot easier to just go to Sprouts or Whole Foods and pick up what you want. But we will go ahead, we will let these dehydrate for the next six hours. We will pull them out and we will see how they taste. All right, so six hours is finally over. My whole day is almost over, and finally we have some dehydrated fruit. So, just going to go ahead and hold the cancel button to turn all of that off. And then we'll go ahead and pull out our kiwi and our banana, or what is left of them. Looking at it, I'm not even sure if I'm gonna try these, but I guess for the sake of the review, I kind of have to. So, I'll try it now and then I'll let them sit and I'll try it again. Um, this is a banana. It tastes like baby food. <laughs> I really want to spit this out right now. Um, as far as dehydrating, I'm not really a fan and I think if I was, I would much rather just go up to Sprouts or Whole Foods and buy some dehydrated fruit rather than listening to this obnoxious sound for six hours. I, even in my bedroom with the door closed, you could still hear this thing. It was so loud. I have a headache. I should record more today and cook one more thing in here, but I can't stand the sound anymore, so I'm calling it a day. I will record more tomorrow, but there's your dehydrated fruit. Okay, so now we are going to use this to rotisserie the chicken. 
So we have a little rod here. We're just gonna stick inside the chicken and then it says to just put it in here, kind of like one angle at a time and slide it in and then we'll put that drip pan underneath before selecting our settings. Let's rotisserie it. So air fried toast, bagel, pizza, bake, broil, rotisserie, set to 375 and 30 minutes. There is no way when I Googled it, it said one to two hours. So we're gonna do an hour and a half and we're gonna turn it up to 400 and that's where I'm gonna keep it. Go ahead and click start. There's that lovely obnoxious sound. I will listen to it for the next hour and a half and then we'll see, I guess, how he turns out. I mean, he just did a full rotation, so he can turn. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, y'all, so the chicken has been in the rotisserie for about 10 minutes. It has completely came untied and the skin is even pulling apart in a way that is making it droop even more. So it was really struggling to get around. Um, it did make a knocking noise a couple times. Not sure if that was just the mechanism itself or if it was the chicken hitting the bottom. Um, but I did just go ahead and turn it off. I guess we'll never know what a rotisserie chicken tastes like out of the Power Air Fryer 360 or at least I won't today, maybe another day. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure. Maybe next time I'll get a little tiny Cornish game hen. Again, I'm not sure if it was the size or the fact that it wasn't tied properly. I don't know, but I'm a real person. <laughs> and this is a real life review and this is what happened when I just tried to rotisserie a chicken. Epic fail. <laughs> okay y'all, so here's my final thoughts on the Power Air Fryer 360. Things that I liked about it. I like the variety of settings. I like the ease of usability of it. I mean the screen is perfect readout. It's very easy to read. Everything's very easy to use and navigate through as far as changing the settings or the time, your slices, things like that. Super simple, very nice. Some things that I do not like about the Power Air Fryer 360. The sound. They don't tell you this or show you this or let you hear this on the commercial, but it is incredibly loud. I do just live in a small townhome. It is a single story, but it is two bedroom, two bath, and it's about 1,200 square feet. And I can have that power air fryer here in the kitchen. I'm actually standing in the dining area in front of my pantry right now. And I can have it here in the kitchen and in the back of the house, in my bedroom, with my door closed, mind you, I can still hear this thing. So when I did the dehydrating process, which I did not realize was six hours long, I couldn't work that day. I work from home. I do phone calls and I'm working on the computer all day. I could not do any of my calls the day that I did the dehydrating because that thing was just for six hours straight. I absolutely could not stand it. I did actually leave my house a couple times while it was running. I stayed close by. I wasn't gone long just in case something happened, but I just had to get out of here. The sound, I could not take it anymore. Of course, not everything takes six hours. It was only the dehydrating. Other than that, everything seems to be two hours or less, two hours about for the rotisserie and some other things, but you know, just your normal baking, um, you know, a quick little pizza, that's 20 minutes, a piece of toast, you know, that's five minutes, things like that are no problem, but definitely if you're going to be using it for an extended period of time, whether you're using that rotisserie, something that's going to take an hour plus or doing that dehydration process, please know that that sound is going to drive you insane. Another thing that I did not like about it was the size. I get that it does everything, you know, it can bake, roast, air fry, rotisserie, dehydrate, all this wonderful stuff, which is great, um, but it is absolutely massive. <laughs> Y'all saw where it was sitting on my counter and it took up that entire space. I don't even know where I'm gonna store it. Um, half of my pantry is for food and the other half I have things like Tupperware, my small appliances, my tumblers, things like that. 
um, my small appliances are already taken up by um, all of my other things. And I guess, yes, this could replace all of them, but I much prefer those <laughs> over this. I rather have, you know, my crock pot and my toaster and things like that versus this thing. It is just way too massive. I didn't like the sound. I didn't like how it heated up my house. Again, don't know where to store it. It's going to have to go either on top of my refrigerator or on top of my cabinets, to be totally honest with you. It is just really, really massive. I live in Arizona. Um, it's starting to heat up. Yesterday, we already peaked at 101 degrees, and it is not even May yet. So any little amount of heating up my house in the summertime is a no-go for me. So even though it's hot outside, I do grill primarily in the summertime. I just go out once the sun is already setting, but anything I can do to avoid heating up my house. So using the oven or that massive toaster oven is not something that I'm interested in. Um, I did notice it heating up my house a little bit, even on just the dehydration. I want to say it was 150 or 175 degrees. And just because it was on for so long, you could still feel the heat radiating from the unit itself. Just not a huge fan of that. But again, if it's something that you're looking for, you want to clear out your small appliances and just have this one unit to use for everything, then it's great because it can do everything. As you saw, it did everything fairly well. The rotisserie was a bit of a challenge for me. Um, I did notice after I stopped filming that the rod we put inside, um, it was a little difficult for me to unscrew at first, which I think is why I didn't notice it, but it was actually able to unscrew in a certain place, um, and then that kind of locked in at the ends of the chicken. So I did go in and try to do that to see if I could, you know, hop back on and show y'all how to rotisserie that chicken. But even then, I mean, it didn't hold anything together. I wasn't going to try to retie it. I did a fairly good job in the beginning or so. I thought it was nice and tight and snug before you put it in there. So I'm not sure if it was me or if it was just it, how it moved when it was rotating that it just kind of came out of those ties and came, kind of fell apart. But I did go about inserting that rod incorrectly, but even going back and doing it the right way afterwards, once I looked at it a little bit more, it still just didn't work. So I unfortunately had to throw that chicken away after all of the amount that I touched it and it scraping on the bottom there in the toaster oven itself, I was not about to do anything else with it. So it just went straight into the garbage, which was unfortunate, but at least y'all got to see firsthand what it was like. I've never rotisseried a chicken before. I've never used anything like this. So that's a real life review firsthand. You got to see what it was like for me to attempt to rotisserie a chicken. So um, it definitely has its benefits and it definitely has its drawbacks. Um, so it's really just personal preference and up to you. I would love to hear down in the comments below if you prefer to just have one device to do it all like this, if that would be something that you would be interested in, or if you're more like me and you just prefer to have a few little appliances. I'm even able to have a small crock pot and a big crock pot. Um, and just a few other little things. So I definitely prefer it that, but I would love to hear what y'all think in the comments below. Also, please make sure that you subscribe to TV Stuff Reviews. Click the bell in the corner so you can get notified each time that we post a new review. And until next time, 